Let's talk about two and three colored plastics today on Laser Mike. Welcome back. I wanted to put this video together for you folks that have a Nova Plus. I did a similar video for the Bolt about a year or a year and three quarters ago because I know that when I started working with two and three colored plastics or acrylics that I had a bit of a hard time trying to get different layers to engrave without impacting the other layers. And so I wanted to throw a few tips your way because I just saw another person who had a similar issue and is trying to figure out why they can't get nice, clean, layered engraves to pick up each color. Depending on who your manufacturer is, you're either going to get your plastics or acrylics that are painted for your top layer versus this, which is a Romark product, as is this. And these are actually plies. So it's not painted. And I think when you're working with painted acrylics that you pick up from a supplier or a different manufacturer, quite often that cap layer is not as consistently applied or consistently thick all the way across the piece, which tends to leave you with material or leftover coloring that you're not able to get out on one pass in some cases. And this is definitely an issue when you're dealing with three color, because now you have three different plies in this case, and each ply is wafer thin and you've got to be able to hone in your settings enough that you can get the cap layer off to expose the second color underneath. But at the same time, if your settings are not strong enough, you can't get the full cap layer off. If they're too strong, you're going to remove the cap layer, see the second layer. But if they're too strong, you're also going to start seeing the third layer through the second layer. And most importantly, it's plastic which means if you've got aggressive settings, you may find yourself melting the plastic in addition to trying to engrave it. So let's start with the two color. Your two color is a much more forgiving because it's just two colors. You've got a cap layer, which again is always the top color you see. And then it has a second corresponding color underneath. I use the Romark brand. I believe some people refer to this as Lamacoid material as well. And you're gonna find some suppliers will paint your cap layer some like Romark here actually create plies of different colored acrylic and fuse them together. This is your Laser Max product line and your top coating is only 0 0.003 inches thick. It's pretty thin, but again, it's very forgiving because you've got a whole lot of extra second material that you can engrave down into that and clearly get your cap layer off. So with your two layer, you've got two settings to work on. One is you need to get a nice clean crisp engrave. So that means the outline of my letters, for example, here need to be nice and crisp. And you've got to work on a cut layer. In determining your settings for either one of these types of layers, engrave or cut, you have to be a little gentle with your settings and test it because if you're too aggressive, you're not going to cut the plastic. You're actually going to melt it at the same time. I mean, after all, it's plastic. If your settings are not strong enough, you're going to find you can't get the whole cap layer off in one pass. This is where you've got a bit of a change in thinking. For me, as I started out with my lasers, I always thought everything had to be done in one pass. And that's just not true because this is one of those times when you need multiple passes. Or as Robert Kofeld has taught us on his YouTube channel called Computer Creations, you sometimes need what he calls a cleanup pass. You've got your main settings that gets most of that cap layer, that color off. But when you're done, you still see bits of it. So you do a second pass with a different power setting and a different LPI setting just to catch those little extraneous bits that didn't come out the first time. Now with this material, I can always get it off in one pass and I've got my settings, which I'll give you right now, that will give you a nice clean crisp engrave as well as a clean cut without melting the plastic. So we'll just make a simple tag here. Skew one, two, three, four. I have a, an engrave area and I need a cut area. So let's go to my settings, down to my material library, Nova Plus. I'm going to run down here to Romark and I need to, we're using the Laser Max white to black. There's my engrave setting. So let's highlight my black, highlight my engrave and let's assign that setting. There we go. And I also need a cut, which is a blue layer. And I'm going to be cutting this stuff here is one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to grab that. There it is, my laser max, and I'm going to assign that. In case it's helpful for you folks, here are my settings. For my engrave on this laser max two color, 
It's 800 millimeters a second at 25 and 25% power, no air assist, fill mode, 475 lines per inch, one pass. My cut settings, 15 millimeters per second at 100% power, air assist is on, line mode, one pass. So let's fire up the laser and let's run the job. So this black and white material probably looks familiar to you. You've probably seen it in a number of different places. For example, when we were kids and we got in trouble and had to go to the vice principal's office at school, you'll notice that his name tag on his desk was made out of the same material, black to white usually, or brown to white. You've also probably seen this in warehouses where you see SKU or material or product IDs written on tags stuck underneath you know, different sections of the racking where all the products are kept. It also looks familiar because a lot of electrical or different types of utilities use this to mark equipment ID, whether it's electrical boxes or hydro panels, any type of equipment out at a different remote site, you'll see these black and white tags stuck to those different types of utility boxes. Yep, pretty dusty. Let's clean it up. A quick tip when it comes to cleaning these types of materials. I know a lot of folks swear by this LA Awesome and it does work really well on most things or on a lot of different things. But in the case of this Laser Max or this two color plastic, the LA Awesome, not so awesome. You're gonna need a handsome looking fellow with big muscles. This is the ticket. Brings it right up nice and bright. And most importantly, gets rid of that black dust out of your white engrave. I'll show you. Let's hit it with the LA Awesome first, just so you can see. I'm gonna grab my microfiber cloth and let's give her a clean. And what the LA Awesome tends to do, similar to the Dawn dish soap, is hopefully you can see that there. It looks like my letters are kind of gray. And the reason for that is because the LA Awesome is not removing all the dust. It's kind of pressing that black dust back into the white. But if I take a magic eraser to this for about three or four seconds, now my white is white. You should also be able to see that my edges are cut, they're not melted, and I have a great cut line around each one of those engraved characters. Nice, clean and crisp, no melting, no damage on the cut line around each one. So just a couple of tips on the two color stuff. You're gonna probably see a lot of dust coming off of that laser with the two and a half inch head. Not a problem, because it cleans up nice and easy. I provided you my settings, and they may not work perfectly for you, but at least it gives you a place to start, and you can dial in from there. And just remember that you don't want your setting so powerful that you're melting the plastic, you're cutting the plastic. And you want to make sure that your settings for the engrave are not too powerful because you'll start to get a damaged or not a very crisp cut line around each of those engraved characters. It'll get a little blurry, look a little damaged or cut because you're melting the plastic. And in the event that you're setting on that first pass doesn't clear all of your cap layer or your top painted layer, I'll show you what I do. Let's move to the three color stuff. So I'm using Tri-Layer Laser Max, and in this case, I've got a yellow, red, black, and I also have a white, yellow, black. And what you'll see here is that when your settings aren't very good, you're gonna find that you're not getting that cap layer off. And if your settings are too strong, you're gonna find that your lettering is clearing the cap layer or the top color hitting the second color, but it's so strong it's starting to show the black underneath slightly. So a little more finicky, you've got to be a little more dialed in. And so I decided to do a couple of material test cards on this. Unlike some other YouTube channels you may see, I've never once done a material test card and went, oh, that's the exact setting, and then done a large scale engraver cut and had that actually work. But on a positive note, it dials you into the general area that you need to focus on and then finesse your settings from there, which is what I did here. Uh, my cap layer is white, my second layer is yellow, so I've had some nice colorings here. Again, had to change the speed and the settings and the DPI, by the way, but I found a good setting that's given me a nice clean engrave without going too deep and is also removing the cap layer. However, when you get down to the third layer or the third color, that gets a little more dicey. And I think it's generally challenging as I've seen on YouTube so in this case, although I can get the cap layer off in one pass with these settings, you'll see here I don't really have any clean settings to get down to the third color. I just don't, not in one pass. So if you look, for example, here, you'll see I'm getting into the black, 
but I'm not getting all of the second color off to get a nice, clean, bright looking third color. And this is where the cleanup pass comes in. Let's jump into Lightburn. So let's just use one of my logos for the test here. We're gonna use the yellow, red, black tri-layer. I've got a cut line. I wanna engrave the cap layer off for these first letters, and then I wanna engrave down to the bottom color for the U and the G. So I have my three settings here. We always wanna cut last, so I'm just gonna move that down. And in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to remove the cap layer first, then I'm gonna remove the second color to get down to the third. So I wanna take the cap layer off first, so I need to assign that to my purpley red layer, which is here. Let's assign it. And then to remove my second layer down to the bottom, I'm gonna assign that to my gray, which is here. Let's assign it. And I'll show you my settings in just a sec. And then of course we need to cut it. Your tri-layer is usually 1 16th, so that's your 1.6 mil. I'm gonna highlight my line, grab that and assign it. Okay, and here are my settings. To remove the cap layer, I'm at 800, and you'll notice I'm only at 13% power min and max, because again, you've got a 0 0.003 inch layer or ply, and if you're too powerful, you're gonna go through it and start to see the black underneath. I have no air, fill mode, 450 lines per inch, only one pass. I'm gonna click OK to that. I also wanna remove that first. So I'm gonna move it up in priority so that engraves that layer first. Now I have to go through to the bottom layer and you'll see it says multi here. It's because in order to get a nice clean engrave, I need to make at least two passes. In this case, two passes does it. You'll see that my first pass is at 720, 40% power, 40% power, no high air, fill mode, 450 lines per inch. And then I use this plus button here to add a second pass, which I call the cleanup pass. That's at 750, 25 and 25, no high air, fill mode, 500 lines per inch. And that gets me that second pass down to the bottom or the third color. And then I have my line, which is my cut, at 30 millimeters per second, 55 and 55% power, high air, one pass. Let's grab it, make sure it's grouped. It is, excellent. And we're gonna make sure that my user origin is the top left, that's where I like it. I have the fill, the multi, and then the cut last. Everything looks good, let's send it to the laser. I'll show you what it looks like. So we're removing the cap layer first. And you'll see that yellow dust is kind of residing a little bit in the end. So it almost looks like it's not taking it all off. But we'll know after we clean it. And now we're removing that second color to reveal the black, the third color. Now I could turn down my air a little bit to get rid of some of that dusting. But I like to keep my air, at least on the Nova Plus, safely above that 0 0.3 default setting for the alarm. So we're finished that first pass. If I left it at that, you would see the example that I showed you a few minutes ago. So now we're doing my cleanup pass. But there's what it looks like coming out of the laser. So just as a test or demonstration, I'm gonna hit it with the LA Awesome again, and then you're gonna see that the Magic Eraser is gonna make those colors a little more rich or brilliant. I've also found that it's always best to wipe the dark colors away and not into the lighter colors. It does a nice job of getting a lot of that off, but let's hit it with the Magic Eraser and see if there's a difference. And that's what we're getting after I hit it with the Magic Eraser. And you can see that the red is a little brighter and a little more rich. I think because the Magic Eraser removes any of that remaining black dust from the, the third layer. So hey, I hope that answers some of the questions I've received or helps you folks that are working with this Lamacoid type product or, that, or different types of painted plastics. 
remember you don't always have to do it in one pass gentler multiple passes are much better when you're working with plastics and hey if you haven't tried it yet try some of these lamacoids or these romark products laser max laser max tri-layer there's also Duramax if you're working on different types of equipment numbers that have to go outdoors. And again, if you're working with these types of outdoor applications, make sure you're not using Dual Tight. Dual Tight is an indoor adhesive. Your 3M467 MP is rated down to negative 40 degrees. That's the stuff to use on the back. Thanks so much for sticking around with me. Have a wonderful week. Please be kind. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.